So I want to share about six ways how we can access a serial monitor. This is something that we do very, very often, especially when developing. But uh, potentially, it can also be used for testing or even automation. So for today, we are just going to use a very, very simple code. And we're going to use the Arduino Uno, just a blinky LED code. And uh, we're going to try to access the high and the low serial prints in different ways, in six different ways. So let's uh, first uh, look at the code. It is really, really simple. If we Google for the Arduino Blinky tutorial, we will see that it will just initiate the LED. And uh, then after that, uh, it will just print out high and low. So in our serial monitor, we should be seeing high and low. So let's start with the first method. The first method that I wanted to share was using really the Arduino IDE. And this is available for all the operating systems. So I'm gonna fire up my Arduino IDE. Now, the first thing to note is whenever we want to access the serial monitor, we have to choose the type of board in Arduino IDE. So for me, it is Arduino Uno. Secondly, we also have to choose the port. So I have selected the port, which Arduino IDE automatically detects it as Arduino Uno. And after this, if we go under tools, the serial monitor is available right there. So let me fire it up. And uh, the first thing that we will see here is um, uh, there are some options at the bottom here, which is like auto scroll, show timestamp, and even baud rate. So baud rate is the second most important thing. For my code, uh, I have used 9600 baud rate. So you see the moment I enable it, you will be able to see the high and the low. What I like about the Arduino IDE's serial monitor is the simplicity. There is this uh, check box to show and unshow the timestamp, which I really love. And you can also clear output anytime. The second code that I wanted to show was to send some serial commands. So the code is also super easy, not very long. All we will do is send on and then off. And we will get back a reply that the LED is on and the LED is off. So let's see how that happens. Uh, first, we will flash in the code. So let me just use the make file to upload the code. So as you can see that the port used here is also detectable in the command line. So we will come back to Arduino again and open up the serial monitor after flashing in the code. Now we have to ensure that there is no line ending here and the baud rate is 115200, which is exactly the same as what we have in the code. So that has to match. So after this, we will use this text box at the top to send in the command. So we will send on and let's see what happens. It will say LED on and off. LED off. So if you have uh, no other options, you can stick to Arduino IDE's serial monitor. I quite like it. And I also like it with the timestamp again. So there you see on and off. And after we have flashed in the blinky LED code once again, we will this time explore the Arduino extension on the VS code, which is also a another popular IDE. And once again, inside VS code, just ensure that you have the Arduino extension already installed. And once you come here, uh, this is the code once again with baud rate 9600. Inside visual code uh, with the Arduino extension, you should be able to select the programmer. So we are going to choose AVR ISP for Arduino Uno. And there are many, many other options here. And uh, just to ensure that the board you have chosen is also Arduino Uno or the board that you will be using. And lastly, the port. This is the port that it has detected, uh, which is the same as what we used for the Arduino IDE. And for the serial monitor, it's right at the bottom with this plug, uh, open serial monitor. So we're going to press that. And uh, let's see, right, it's not working because I need to choose the board rate as 9600. And there you see high, low, high, low are coming. The next example that I want to show is platform IO. It is uh, also available for Atom, 
but uh, when you want to use it for Atom, it says that VS Code is better. So if you are already using VS Code, go ahead and use it, but I'll just show it how it works for Atom. So I'll go ahead and uh, click install here. And once you say install, it will give you some instructions. So why don't we fire up Atom this time? but we will have to go ahead and actually install it. So I'm gonna go to preferences and as for the instruction, I'm gonna install platform IDE and let's install it. So after we install platform IDE on the Atom editor, you'll see that the left sidebar is slightly different. You will have many, many options to compile, upload the code. And finally, the same symbol as the VS code, this little plug symbol, it will say serial monitor. So let's click that. And inside serial monitor, once again, the two things that we have to choose is the port and the baud rate. So let's start it. And there you see it is uh, printing out high and low every second. Uh, and it is showing the serial monitor. Once again, this is another option for us. If we are using IDE and we need very, very quick access to serial monitor, you can consider using platform IO with uh, the Atom editor, but of course their preference is the VS code. The fourth way to access the serial monitor is using this program called CoolTerm, and we can download it from Roger Meyer's freeware website. It is uh, available for, in fact, uh, many, many common operating system, Mac, Windows, Linux. So go ahead and download it and let's fire it up. So I do like Coulter because uh, this is one way of independently accessing the serial monitor without the IDE. So when we open the options, there are different ports available, same as the other examples. So we're going to choose our Arduino port and then the baud rate as well. Uh, if you cannot detect the port, you can choose rescan serial port. So we're going to say OK. And then you have to click connect or control K, command K. And there you see the high, low, high, low is coming up here pretty easily. You can also disconnect it. What I like about uh, cool term is also uh, we can capture it uh, to a text file. So if you go to connection and then capture, let's say start, and then you can maybe just uh, have a log file on the desktop and uh, let's uh, stop the capture after a while disconnect it and we should be able to go to the desktop and view the log file. So this is how it looks like uh, just high, low, high, low, which is not very useful, is it? But uh, we can also add in the, under the options, we can also add in the timestamps. So if we go to receive, we can say add timestamps. So let's say, okay, and let's connect it again. And this time under uh, capture text to text file, we will try to s view it once again. And after a while, let's uh, stop it. Disconnect, clear data. All right, so this is the second log file. And there you see, you will have the timestamps available here as well. So I find this really, really useful, especially if you are testing, say, long periods of time, say, over hours, and if you do not want to fire up your IDE. So this can be, cool term is uh, really useful for that. I do want to uh, show the serial send. So let me upload the code for the serial send here. And now when I come back, uh, I will choose the port but the baud rate is 115200. We can actually say connection and then send string. So let's try that very, very similar. Sorry, I need to connect it, of course. And then connection send string. Let's try this. So we say on and there you see LED will be on. And when you say off, LED will be off. So you can do a lot of capturing of data or even send serial commands. So I'm gonna flash in the blinky LED once again. And this time, the fifth tool that I'm gonna show resides right on the command line actually. So we can actually detect which port there is by doing some kind of uh, prompting and this port is available. So we're gonna use this port and the Linux command screen. And once again, screen, the first uh, argument will be the port and the second argument will be the baud rate. 
So you see, it will keep saying high, low, high, low, and this is right from the terminal. Pretty useful if you need to access a device that is connected to a remote server. This is very, very useful. Now for screen, you need to know how to kill the screen or how to exit. Control A and Control slash. And then, yes, I want to quit. For the very, very last option, we are going to access the Linux TTY. And for this, so we are going to use another Linux command and it is called STTY. Uh, this helpful article on um, Arduino website itself actually shows us how to do it. But we will need a Linux operating system. So let me switch over to my virtual box, uh, virtual machine. So I'm here in my virtual machine and uh, let's check the operating system first. And I'm using Ubuntu version 18 LTS. The first thing we have to ensure is under devices USB, we make sure that the port for Arduino is available in our virtual machine. Of course, if you're using Linux natively, that's not required. Next, we are gonna check whether the USB is available. Yes, it can detect. And why don't we try out ls slash dev slash tty. That's a lot of options. But uh, for Arduino, it is actually this one, slash dev slash tty acm0. Of course, it might uh, depend and you might have to do the search once again. So we are gonna use the stty command to finally connect to the Arduino. So for this, we'll need the sudo command STTY and dash F, we will say the port TTY ACM0 and speed 9600. So seems like it is trying to detect the baud rate, but my baud rate is 9600. Okay, so it finally detected it correctly, 9600 baud rate. Now what we need to do is sudo cat and just the port name. So you see immediately, uh, just like screen or any other serial monitor, it will start printing out the high and the low. Now, what is the purpose of doing this? We can actually automate testing with this uh, because it is uh, fired with uh, the command line arguments. So what we are gonna do is instead of just cat, uh, why don't we try to cat it to a log file? And after a while, we'll just stop it and let's try to view the log file. And there you see the log file will have this. So if you want to automate testing, connect to a device which is available on a remote server, maybe once a day, a few times a day, you can use STTY and then CAT and then print it to a log file. So those were the six ways on how we can access the serial monitor, right from IDE to some terminal commands to even a standalone application such as CoolTerm or even using STTY and then CAT for some automation or integrating with the continuous integration server. So how else are you using the serial monitor? Are you using something else? Uh, let me know. Thank you so much.